welcome to to the point let's discuss about atmospheric circulation and weather systems in climate we all know that air expands when heated and it gets compressed when it is cooled and this results in the variation of atmospheric pressure the result in the atmospheric pressure it causes the movement of air from high pressure to low pressure what is atmospheric pressure the weight of a column of air that is contained in a unit area from the mean sea level to the top of the atmosphere it is called as atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure it is expressed in the units of mb that is millibars and pascals due to the gravity in the air at the surface is denser and it has a higher air pressure air pressure it is measured with the help of a mercury barometer we know that the pressure decreases with the height at any elevation it varies from place to place and its variation is a primary cause of air motion that is wind which moves from high pressure areas to the low pressure areas vertical variation of pressure the vertical pressure variation it is a variation in the pressure as a function of elevation horizontal distribution of pressure the distribution of the atmospheric pressure across the latitudes it is termed as global horizontal distribution and this distribution it is characterized by the presence of distinctly unidentifiable zones of homogeneous pressure regimes or the pressure belts forces affecting the velocity and direction of wind so we know that the air is in motion and due to the differences in atmospheric pressure the air in the motion is called wind the wind blows from high pressure to low pressure the wind at the surface experiences friction and in addition the rotation of the earth it also affects the wind movement the force exerted by the rotation of the earth is known as coriolis force and thus the horizontal winds near the earth surface it responds to the combined effect of three forces the pressure gradient force the frictional force and the coriolis force pressure gradient force the difference in the atmospheric pressure it produces a force the rate of change of pressure with respect to distance is a pressure gradient the pressure gradient is strong where the isobars are close to each other and it is weak where the isobars are apart frictional force it affects the speed of the wind and it is the greatest at the surface and its influence it generally extends up to an elevation of 1 to 3 km over the sea surface the friction is minimal the coriolis effect the rotation of the earth about its axis it affects the direction of the wind and this force is called as coriolis force it deflects the wind to the right direction in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern direction the deflection is more when the wind velocity is high the coriolis force it is directly proportional to the angle of latitude the coriolis force it is maximum at the poles and it is completely absent at the equator the coriolis force it acts perpendicular to the pressure gradient and pressure gradient acts perpendicular to an isobar and if the pressure gradient is higher then the velocity of the wind is more and the larger is the deflection in the wind as a result these two forces operate perpendicular to each other in low pressure areas the wind blows around it and at the equator the coriolis force is zero and wind blows perpendicular to the isobars the low pressure gets filled instead of getting intensified and that is the reason why tropical cyclones are not formed near the equator major pressure belts and wind system a small difference in pressure they are highly significant in terms of wind direction and velocity horizontal distribution of pressure it is studied by drawing isobars at the constant levels isobars they are the lines 
that have equal pressure. In order to eliminate the effect of altitude on the pressure, it is measured at any station after being reduced to sea level for the purpose of comparison. The spacing of the isobars, it expresses the rate and direction of pressure changes and it is referred to as pressure gradient. Close spacing of the isobars, they indicate a steep or strong pressure gradient, while a wide spacing, it is a weak gradient. The pressure gradient may be defined as a decrease in pressure per unit distance in the direction in which the pressure decreases most rapidly. There are some zones which are distinctly identifiable zones of homogeneous horizontal pressure regimes or the pressure belts on the earth's surface. They are all in seven pressure belts. The seven pressure belts are the equatorial low, the subtropical high, the subpolar low and the polar highs. Except the equatorial low, remaining all the three tropical zones, polar zones and polar highs are present in both northern and southern hemisphere. General circulation of the atmosphere. The pattern of the planetary winds, it largely depends on latitudinal variation of the atmospheric heating, emergence of pressure belts, the migration of the belts following apparent path of the sun, the distribution of continents and oceans, and the rotation of the earth. The air at the intertropical convergence zone, it rises because of convection which is caused by high insulation and low pressure is created. The winds from the tropics, they converge at this low pressure. The converged air, it rises along with the convective cells. It reaches the top of the troposphere up to an altitude of 14 km and moves towards the poles. This causes accumulation of air about 30 degree north and 30 degree south. Part of the accumulated air, it sinks to the ground and forms subtropical height. Another reason for sinking is the cooling of air when it reaches 30 degree north and south latitudes. Down below, near the land surface, the air flows towards the equator as easterlies. The easterlies from either side of the equator, it converge in the intertropical convergence zone. Such circulation from the surface upwards and vice versa, they are called as cells. Such a cell in the tropics is known as Hadley cell. In the middle latitudes, the circulation is that of sinking cold air and that comes from the poles and the rising warm air that blows from the subtropical high. At the surface, those winds, they are called as westerlies and the cell is known as feral cells. At the polar latitudes, the cold dense air, it subsidizes near the poles and blows towards middle latitudes as the polar easterlies. This cell is called as polar cell. These three cells, they set a pattern for the general circulation of the atmosphere. The transfer of heat energy from lower latitudes to higher latitudes, they maintain the general circulation. The general circulation of the atmosphere, it also affects the oceans. The large scale winds of the atmosphere initiate large and slow moving currents of the ocean. Ocean in turn, it provides input of energy and water vapor into the air. This interaction takes place rather slowly over a large part of the ocean. These are the general circulations of air in the atmosphere. Seasonal winds. The pattern of the wind circulation, it is modified in different season due to the shifting of regions of maximum heating pressure and wind belts. The most pronounced effect of such a shift, it is noticed in the monsoons, especially over Southeast Asia. Local winds. Difference in heating and cooling of the earth surfaces and the cycles, those developed daily or annually, it create a several common local or the regional winds. Land and sea breezes. The land and the sea breeze, 
they absorb and transfer heat differently during the day the land heats up faster and becomes warmer than the sea therefore over the land the air rises giving rise to low pressure area whereas the sea is relatively cool and the pressure over the sea is relatively high thus the pressure gradient from the sea to land it is created and the wind blows from sea to land as sea breeze in the night during night this condition is reversed the land loses heat faster and it is cooler than the sea the pressure gradient is from the land to sea and hence it results in land breeze mountain and valley winds in the mountainous region during the day the slopes get heated up and the air moves up slope and to fill the resulting gap the air from the valleys it blows up the valley and this wind is known as valley breeze and during night the slopes get cool and the dense air it descends into the valley as the mountain wind the cool air of the high plateaus and ice fields draining into the valley it is called as catabatic wind another type of warm wind occurs on the leeward side of the mountain ranges the moisture in this winds while crossing the mountain ranges they condense and precipitate when it descends downward the leeward side of the slope the dry air gets warmed up by adiabatic process and this dry air may melt the snow in a short time air masses when the air remains over a homogeneous area for a sufficiently longer time it acquires characteristics of the area the homogeneous region it can be vast ocean surface or the vast plains the air with distinctive characteristics in terms of temperature and humidity is called as air mass friends when two different air masses meet the boundary zone between them it is called as front the process of formation of the fronts is known as frontogenesis there are four types of fronts they are cold warm stationary and occluded when the front remains stationary it is called as stationary front when the cold air moves towards the warm air mass its contact zone is called as cold front if the warm air moves towards the cold air mass the contact zone is called as warm front if an air mass is fully lifted above the land surface it is called as occluded front these fronts occur in the middle latitudes and they are characterized by the steep gradient in temperature and pressure they also bring abrupt changes in the temperature and they cause air to rise to form the clouds and cause precipitation tropical cyclones tropical cyclones they are violent storms and they originate over oceans in tropical areas and they move over the coastal areas which brings about a large scale destruction caused by violent winds very heavy rainfall and storm surges this is one of the most devastating natural calamities they are known as cyclones in indian ocean hurricanes in the atlantic typhoons in the western pacific and south china sea and willy willy in the western australia see you in the next session thank you